We're going to start looking at the color profiles with film stock emulation profiles. They are certainly the most interesting part of color lab profiles. I do tend to use these profiles the most and there is something very interesting about the way how film was you know, creating color palettes that it just works today very well with digital cameras. So what Color Lab does very well is to take the visual language of film, contrast and color palette and create something completely new. So let's have a look how we're going to do that. So now that I have selected, for example, an F3 contrast, I'm going to go and start, for example, with a Fuji palette. Now, I do like this Fuji palette, especially since Fuji was not used that much, you know. Kodak was always a prevailing film stock and only by the end of the kind of film era, Fuji really started developing very interesting materials, especially on a 35 millimeter front. Up to then, they had a stronghold in 16 millimeter stock. So for example, I have here 8543 and 8553. They are like a very, very interesting film stocks. I really like their look. I really like them. So for example, here, I, I think this is looking very good, but what I need to do now is I need to go into my printer lights. Now, every time you're doing film stock emulation, you should behave in a such a way as if you're processing film. And when we used to process film, we used to process it with film lights. So we would expose film stock with three different lights. And depending how long we keep each one of those lights, we would be able to achieve particular effects. So we would get basically notes from the cinematographer who would say four points red or they saw that they had a, like a language, how to communicate, how they wanted dailies processing to affect the look of the film by changing the printer lights. And in uh, Color Lab, you also have a printer lights. These printer lights work different than those already in Da Vinci. They won't give you the same effect. And also another word of caution, you have to be very sensitive with these printer lights. Don't use them a lot because they will rather, you know, create very strange results. You have to use it in a very, very sparing manner. So for example, if I wanna just take a little bit of red out and warmth out of this stock, I would get this beautiful skin tone just by applying minus 006 in red printer lights. That would be for a nice look for Fuji 8553. Okay, then you also have 8563. It's an interesting look. I usually go on printer lights here and I take some of the blue out and that kind of gives me like a kind of, you know, interesting, a little bit more cooler look, you know? Um, then uh, what we also have is a Fuji Eterna 250. Very interesting stock like Eterna, I like. It's a, like a low on saturation. It has a very interesting kind of way how it looks. Then also you have F125. Now F125 is a typical kind of look that you would get from some sort of like, you know, stocks from back in the day. It is very harsh, you know, it's a good for like any indie look you're trying to create. And then there is a Vivid 500, which is again the opposite of the 125. This stock is preserving the richness of the color and it has a relatively wide gamut. Now, let's look at the Kodak stocks. Kodak being more popular look is usually the look that people kind of relate when we're talking about film look. And this is an absolute classic. It is a 2383. It is a print stock that uh, was used a lot as an intermediary stock because it was a little bit stronger and it wasn't breaking a lot. And this is the classic kind of, you know, film stock that you can find emulated a lot. So then we have a 2393, very similar version, but just with a little bit more red. So what you can do is you can go and basically reduce a little bit red lights of that stock, and then you can increase some of the saturation and you can get like a very interesting look with that, for example. So you see, this could be like a very nice Kodak looking look. Then you have a 3514, you know, which is also like a, a little bit newer generation and then Ektar, which is like totally forgotten. But, you know, it's there. In case you wanna play with it, you wanna go for something a little bit crazy, it's absolutely there. 
Then chrome 200 and color 200, they are related to one another. They are coming, you know, from a similar era. Now, again, like, you know, you have to be working on something that needs a little bit more of a kind of crazy approach, but I have put them in there exactly for that. Some directors really like to kind of go a little in a particular direction. And then uh, these are the really important ones. So Kodak Vision 3, you know, this is negative stock and being negative it has a beautiful response as you can see it has a lot of color it has a wide gamut and has a very good dynamic range and this is really good stock um, that will give you very little problem like you know when you're trying to create certain looks you can also go ahead and try to tweak it a little bit with your printer lights you know so for example you can go and just add maybe a little bit warmth you know, like just a little bit touch and that kind of feels like a little bit more Kodak. You see this one needed a little bit, few printer lights of red extra. Then another one we have here is the, you know, same stock, but it's 400 T, you know, uh, and then we have a 5207. It's a very interesting stock as well, by the way. It's also one of the latest ones actually that Kodak was making. And then we have a 5219 that was processed with a completely wrong uh, white balance. So actually, you know, just for fun, if you ever want to see, you know, or you want to create this particular very cold look, you know, like for example, you can go and just desaturate one a little bit more, you know, and then you can take some of the green out, you know, you will see like you can, you can get very interesting feel with it. So these are all film stock emulation profiles that you have and i am sure that these are the ones that you will end up using the most at least like you know they will give you the quickest you know the most uh, pleasing results and then as a um, add-on benefit to it use printer lights to tweak those emulations to your liking